Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've been using Zwift for the past about six months now. Um, obviously I'm still getting used to it, but one of the things that I was always curious about was how accurate the Zwift Z power really actually is. For the first about five months of my Zwift experience, I was just using a regular dumb trainer. Um, they say dumb trainer, the trainer's nice, but uh, it doesn't have the smart capabilities that would include power and things like that. So. Using that trainer, I don't have, I didn't have a power meter, so I was at the mercy of Zwift Z Power to do any type of Zwift racing and riding. So I've been using that for the past five months or so, and I was always curious how accurate that actually is. So in this video, I'm going to go through with you guys uh, what that looks like. I was finally able to get a power meter for my new bike. Um, obviously, I'm super excited about that. And getting that power meter in the mail was so exciting. It's always like Christmas to get new bike tech. But let's dive into how accurate that power meter against the Zwift Z Power actually is. First off, let's talk about what Zwift Z Power actually is and what it does. Um, the Z Power index itself is calculated uh, using the speed of your bike itself. So if you're on an indoor trainer, you have a certain amount of resistance that's going up against the wheel. And that's why the wheel doesn't just spin indefinitely. You've got some sort of resistance that is limiting your speed. Now that resistance can be calculated depending on each model of trainer. They'll all do the resistance slightly differently, which is why at the same power you'd be going a different speed on various different indoor trainers. And even some trainers will give you the option to change the resistance level. I know my magnetic trainer that I've been using does have that option. You can change between one and seven to get different levels of resistance. Now this is tricky on Zwift because you're trying to compare efforts across many different people, which is why you want to use something like power. Now power is measured in watts, and those watts represent the amount of power that you're delivering to the pedals at any given time. Now this is the thing that can be the same across multiple different athletes. So if two different athletes are riding different speeds on their different indoor trainers, they could be using the same exact power number, which is what they want to use to compare against different athletes. So in lieu of having power meters for every single athlete, and because Zwift wants to make their platform as inclusive as possible, they've created Zwift Z Power, which is an estimation of that power because of the trainer. Now the calculation itself is using specifically the speed of your bike against the resistance that that trainer has. And since each trainer is different, what Zwift did is they took the most popular brands, the most popular trainers that exist, and they used those numbers, and they did tons of testing, and they used the different resistance numbers against existing power numbers to see at what speed a different trainer will deliver what power. So if I have my specific trainer, whether it's a Cyclops or something else, they will make all these test runs where they'll include a power meter or someone will test how fast they're going at a certain power level and they'll grab all of that and make the calculations of how hard you need to go to hit a certain speed on that trainer. And now when we play the game, we don't have to do that same calculation because we say, I'm using this trainer and it uses that same existing training set against that specific brand and model of trainer. And then when I'm going 28 miles an hour on my specific Cyclops trainer, then it knows that at 28 miles an hour on this specific trainer, I should be doing about 200 watts, let's say as an example. Now using those numbers, they can create power numbers for multiple different athletes that don't necessarily have power meters. Okay, so that's kind of a long explanation, but the point is that Zwift Z Power is a calculated field, and it's calculated against lots and lots of research, and they're trying to make that as accurate as possible. But how accurate is it really? So now that I have a power meter, I connected my Zwift to the actual Zwift Z Power, so I used the same things that I always used. I used my speed, cadence, and my heart rate, but I did not use a power meter for Zwift. And I did that full workout, and I did like a five minute test um, with that amount of power, but I also, saved my power numbers to my bike computer, my Wahoo Bolt, and I downloaded both of those and I compared them. So let's dive into the computer and see what that comparison looks like. Here we go. Okay, as a quick uh, PSA before I get into the actual data that I'm comparing right now, uh, just keep in mind, obviously my power numbers are low. This is a journey that I'm on and we're kind of on this together. I appreciate those of you who are subscribed to the channel and following along that journey. I'm obviously improving in my cycling skills, but it's a long road ahead, a long road that I'm very excited about training and improving, so don't take into account necessarily the actual numbers themselves so much as the comparison and the test that we're doing. So if you use Zwift Power, which is one of the main companion sites to Zwift to compare race results and things like that, um, you can also use an analysis tool, which is quite awesome. Uh, it's one that I use to compare the different power numbers 
from the 4i power meter that I have against the Zwift Z power and it worked great. I was able to download the um, actual fit files from Strava and from Wahoo and comparing them is really easy. So let's go into that comparison right now. I created that and I'll make this public if you guys want to check out the data. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Um, but let's look into it. So as you can see, it looks very similar and I should probably give a quick round of applause to Zwift for doing such a good job and making these numbers as accurate as possible. So congrats guys, you did a great job. Now let's look into the specific differences. And on this graph that you can see right now, the blue line is my actual power meter and the purple line is kind of, kind of a purple color. Uh, that's gonna be the Z power. So the actual power meter is in blue and the calculated power is in purple. Now that calculated power is based off of my speed. And this is where I think a lot of the difference lies. When I put power into my pedals, so when I try to push a little bit harder, the actual power number that I'm putting out is instantly increased. And the difference being with Z power, it takes a little bit for me to push that power to increase my speed. I can't instantly go from 20 miles an hour to 24 miles an hour, I have to slowly increase to that value. However, I can increase my power instantly to whatever number that I'm able to push at that time. So if you can tell on this graph, and I can zoom into some of these portions, on here it's pretty clear that my Zwift power is lower than my actual power, but my actual power is all over the place. It's bumpy, uh, changes, which is how power should be. Obviously, the more trained you are, the easier it's going to be for you to hold a steady power. You get better at the whole pedal stroke and not having jumpy power, but I'm not quite at that point yet, so my power graphs look a little bit jumpy. Um, but let's look at one of the points that I think are really cool. Now, my power number increases right here, so you can see that my 4i watts are 135 and my Z power is 164. This is one of the instances where before a sprint, I maybe eased off the power a little bit on my power meter, but since my speed didn't really change that much, Zwift continued to, to hold my old power number of about 160, 150. But then I went into that sprint, and I don't know if I could call this a sprint, I think I was only doing like 400 watts, maybe a little bit less, but it was a, it was a harder push during the workout, and instantly my power goes up here. So I go up to 257 watts, but my Z power is still around 150. So obviously it takes a little bit more time. There's a little bit of lag between when you would kick off a sprint and your power meter is registering that new power versus on Zwift, it's still holding that same speed because you haven't quite increased that speed yet. And it looks that way, but as you notice, Zwift has the exact same issue on the other end. So if you're keeping your speed high, even though I've stopped my effort, um, the speed is going to translate into that same power on Zwift. So it takes a little bit longer for your power to fall off at the end, even though you ha aren't pushing the same amount of watts into the pedals. Now in an actual sprint, we see almost the exact same thing. I start to work up my sprint and my watts are increasing, and we're seeing significant gaps here. We're seeing something like about a 100 watt difference between the actual power and the power that Zwift says that I'm putting out, whereas Zwift still thinks I'm resting because the speed has not increased quite yet but my power meter knows that I am starting to ramp the effort back up again. So Zwift trails for a little bit here, um, not by much, by about two or three seconds, uh, that increase. And then when you get up to the peak, look at the difference between these peaks. Right here, I'm at three minutes and 37 seconds, but it takes until three minutes and 41 seconds, so about four seconds for that peak to register on Zwift Z power. So the peak here on my 4i precision power meter being 760 watts, and the peak on Zwift only being 688 watts. So when you're working out, I mean, a 100 watt difference on your max is gonna be pretty significant to you. Um, but then again, Zwift is holding that increase after my actual power has decreased because the speed is still increasing. There's just that lag that you can generally see across this entire chart. So let's talk about the totals for a second. Uh, if you go down just a little bit past this graph, you see that my Z power total was 137 watts as an average and my 4i was 132 watts, I would say those are very similar. That's definitely within the realm of accuracy, and I would say those are almost identical. So congratulations again to Zwift Z Power for being able to have quite an accurate number without any actual power data, just using my speed and the trainer that I'm on. The maximum power, I think, is the biggest difference. Um, just using speed is a little bit trickier because especially if it's a short sprint, I may never increase my speed by that much. My acceleration may only take me to a certain speed, but then drop back down again. So that power could have increased significantly, 
but Zwift will never register that because the speed was never reached. So having a difference of almost, let's see, 80, 90 watts here is pretty significant. Uh, so I would say that's, that's something to be concerned about as far as the actual max wattage. And then if we go into our power curve, which is probably a little bit more technical data than most of you are interested in, so feel free to skip this part if you'd like to. But Zwift actually does take the cake for a lot of these intervals between five seconds and about a minute. And Zwift is gonna have a higher value, which I thought was interesting. I think that may have something to do with the length of this test against the different sprints that I had. Um, considering it was only five minutes long and some of the sprints, the Zwift power would stay higher for longer, but only by a few seconds, that may have affected our power curve. But they do follow each other rather closely, and the biggest gap that we see is right here at the beginning, because that's our, our instant power, so our kind of our max um, output. Obviously, the difference there being about 70 watts, which is pretty significant. Okay, so now you've seen the difference between the actual power and the Zwift Z power, and as an overall, I would say they are quite accurate with their calculations. And I'm pretty impressed by the overall accuracy. I know one of the things that I was seeing as I was doing regular Zwift tests is as my fitness increased, um, that discrepancy would increase just a little bit more. But I was also wary the whole time as I was getting better Zwift numbers. I was like, well, maybe the Z power is just wildly inaccurate. Maybe I can't quite trust it. So maybe my power numbers aren't as high as I thought they are. Maybe they aren't as low as I thought they are in certain workouts. You may be concerned about those differences. So. If you are concerned, I would definitely invest in a power meter. The one that I got, I absolutely love. It's the 4i Precision Power Meter. And I think right now you can get it from various websites. The one I used was Power Meter City, and you can get that for about $300. Mine was $299. So really excited about that. Um, I'll put a link somewhere in the description below if you're interested, but it's very exciting and getting those power numbers makes it even cooler to look back through your data. And I think one of the things that I've learned is, is you kind of saw the jumpy graph is to really improve that efficiency is going to help my overall cycling skills. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is a journey for me. It's something that I'm constantly improving and I'm excited to document that journey on YouTube. So if you like these videos or if you want to follow along that journey, please don't hesitate to subscribe. I'd love to have as many of you along this journey as I can. I love the insights from all of you in the comments. Um, if you have any, comments, questions, or anything that you'd like to share with me to help me learn a little bit more. I always appreciate that. So feel free to leave those in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you did enjoy the content and I will see you in the next one. Thanks.